Hey guys, welcome to the Blue Mouse Podcast. My name is Emily. I'm the full-time knitwear designer behind the Blue Mouse, and you can find me under that same name on Instagram and Ravelry. So, I missed last week, but I have a lot to show you this week to make up for it. So, let's start out with a little bit of failure, shall we? <laughs> so, I think I posted this on Instagram, not on the podcast or anything. But I wanted to make a scrappy sweater. So just using up all of my fingering weight scraps and making a very easy garter stitch sweater. And so I knit up one panel, I, I made a swatch, and then I wrote the pattern. And then I started working on the sample. And as I was knitting it, I got to the armhole shaping and got a little ways into that. And I was like, this is way, way too long. It looked looked very long and the armhole looked super long. It just looked awful. But I kept going and I was like, well maybe, I don't know, something will happen to it in a box. So I finished it and I was like, there's definitely something off. I was so close by the time I got to the armhole shaping that I was like, I'll just finish it and block it and my gauge is completely different. <laughs> so this is my little failure to start off with. So this is what it looks like. Kind of. It's very, very long. It is probably about maybe six or seven inches too long. So it's supposed to be just a very simple kind of wide neck and then I'm going to do a rolled hem so that it brings it in a little bit. And it's going to be worked in panels because garter stitch is so much easier and in my opinion looks better when it's worked flat. But I, I don't know, I wasn't in love with this project. So I got to about, I think I'd finished one shoulder and I just had a couple inches to finish the second shoulder. It was very little bit of knitting. And I put it down because I really just didn't like the way that the colors looked together and I was kind of bored of it. I think because the colors didn't really spark joy in me at all. So I put it down and then finally decided, all right, fine, I'll finish it. So I finished the shoulder and blocked it and I'm glad I did because it's way too big. So now I can go back and rework the pattern with this new row gauge. I've had a lot of problems with garter stitch swatches in the past. I don't know if any of you have had the same problem, but they always seem to come out different in the final product than they do in the swatch. Even if I make a really big swatch, I don't... I don't know what it is. It's They either grow way too much after the sweater is done, like this one, or they shrink up. So, I don't know. I don't really know how to fix that. Maybe I need to like add weight to my swatches or something in this case. Another question I have that maybe some of you can answer for me is that I'm working on a type of sweater I don't do as often, where it's bottom up and it's also in pieces, but I'm adding shaping, a little bit of shaping around the armholes just to remove a little bit of bulk underneath the arms. And so I'm, I'm removing about an inch on each side. So that's on the front and the back panel. So that's about four inches in total. And my question is that because you're taking bulk out from around the bust area, does that mean that that is where you measure for the pattern? So your hips will end up being wider than your bust. Does that make sense? Because you're taking an inch out of each side, so you've got less room around the bust here. I was just confused about that. I chose a size for the sample that had about, I think, eight inches of positive ease, but if you take the four inches out for the armhole shaping, like the one on each, each bit of the armhole, then that only gives me four inches of positive ease, which is fine, but I'm lucky if I had chosen a size with four inches, then I wouldn't have any ease. So I don't really quite know how to work that. This isn't my favorite method of writing patterns, but because it's garter and I want garter to be worked flat, it seemed the only way. So yeah, this was a major fail. I don't like it at all. I like the top half better than the bottom. I don't like the big swatches of colors. I've decided I want to do smaller stripes of color. So I started the second panel. I'm just going to rip this back out and 
save it for something else because I'm not going to keep this panel. So I've decided to kind of rework it and I'm going to use colors that really go well together instead of just any scrap I find because I want it to look cohesive and I won't wear it otherwise which uh, just gives me more motivation. So I'm in the middle of a row, I apologize for that. So this is what it, it looks like so far. So I like this start a lot better and instead of using only scraps, I'm going to use some scraps and some minis. So I have I think maybe 8 or 9 minis that I'm going to wind up and they're all neutral colors and pretty muted and toned down but that's kind of what I like and I'm going to use that instead. And I might have to get a couple more minis in order to finish the sweater but I'll actually wear it this way and yeah, I like it a lot better and it should be a lot more cohesive. So that's what I have started and I have a whole container filled with scraps and then I'm winding up minis after the podcast is over. So I will probably start on this again mid next week. I'm going to put it away for the weekend because I have a lot of other things to work on. But yeah, lesson learned there. I don't quite know how to rem remedy that, maybe way down my swatch, maybe? I don't know. Now I know. If I was trying to match gauge, I feel like that would have been easier than trying to figure out what the natural gauge is anyway. So today is what <laughs> my husband has started calling a mega work day. So when he was on tour for a weekend last month, I got so much work done because I just didn't do anything else besides work. I didn't cook, I didn't really do anything else, I didn't clean, I just worked. And I just had the most productive weekend. So he thought it would be a good idea if once a month I pick a day and have a mega work, have a mega work day. So he'll go work at his other studio and hang out with friends after work and I'll have the day to have the house being quiet and not having to cook dinner and yeah that is what today is. So I had a hard time kind of getting started, finding motivation and getting into a good groove but before I sat down to podcast I got into a good groove. So what I'm working on is I sent two patterns to my tech editor this past week and I just got the notes back so I was saving it for today to work on it because I knew I would have the entire day to devote to it. So the first one I've been working on is my little tune sweater, which is this one right here. And there's a lot of reworking that needs to be done with this. I've never done a baby sweater. So it's definitely a learning curve, but I really enjoy it. It's very fast and it's just so cute. I mean, it's adorable. But I am reworking it and I'm taking out a couple of sizes and what I've started doing is actually creating my own size chart. So I've devoted like an Excel spreadsheet to adult and to baby and child sizes and taking kind of averages that I found online and it just has involved a ton of research and figuring out math and just putting it all into a spreadsheet and finding the averages that I get from all these different places and I look on like clothing website size charts a lot of times I can find information there and yeah so I've been doing that for the past few hours to probably have to rework this sweater I'm not sure but that way I can be confident and easily have access to sizes when I'm starting a pattern I found that what I was doing is just going back to a pattern of my own and looking at my like previous size chart or my previous schematic and getting it from there, but it just makes more sense to put together my own size chart for patterns in the future and then I have a, a resource to go to. So yeah, that was really good. There's lots of information I found on like Pinterest and just going on clothing website size charts and you know, even looking at other like free pattern schematics and figuring out, okay, well how long... This I've done mainly for baby sweaters because I... It's hard to find information on baby sizes. So 
I went on a couple of free patterns online on Ravelry and looked at, okay, how long do they have their sleeves and how long is the sweater? And I've compiled a huge list of different sizes to compare to. So I feel more confident going back and reworking this pattern a little bit. That's part of today's agenda. I'm hopefully gonna get that done before it gets too late and then I can move on to my other pattern which I got back from my tech editor which is a cardigan pattern. So I worked on this all last week and made quite a lot of progress for one week. I got the entire body and about half of one sleeve done in a week but then I ran out of yarn and had to order more and I just got the yarn in today. So the um, the dye lot is different, so I mean it's mixed with mohair, so I'm going to try and alternate skeins for the remainder of the sleeves and then it should be good, should be fine, especially with the uh, mohair because the mohair kind of muddles it. But I used the glazed pecan color in the Madeline Tosh Prairie base, which is a single ply lace weight that is 100% merino. And it's just this really, really pretty color. So I got that skein in today. So probably tomorrow after I get some more math done, I'll start working on this again. But this is kind of what I have. It's a little hard to show you actually without it being worn. But yeah, this is what I have. It's not crazy long. I made another sample. Let me grab it. I made another sample months ago, which is kind of the basis for this one. It's this big blue cardigan. It's super long. It's crazy long, but I reworked it a bit because I learned more about how to make raglan shaping easier. So I, I totally scrapped this and pretty much redid it. I took the basic sizing information I had and the basic idea and reworked it into a new cardigan. So unfortunately this, while really cozy, is not a good representation of the new pattern. I'll still wear it, I love it, but it doesn't, it's not quite accurate. So I mixed it with Knit Picks Aloft Mohair, which is a really affordable mohair. I think it maybe goes for about six or seven dollars a ball. I could be wrong about that, but yeah. So that's really affordable. So it will come with three different options to make it cropped, normal length, or long. The first version I made was long. It took forever, so you gotta be dedicated if you wanna do that version. The second version I made is just a normal length, but the cropped would be so quick. And it's A-line, so after you split for the sleeves, you do very slow increases underneath the arms to get kind of an A-line shape. I think you put in four inches as you go, it's kind of hard to see it, but you might be able to tell the the yarn over is there. They're kind of spread out, so they go like that. But yeah, so that will be the next pattern I go over after I fix the Baby Tune sweater. I really like that one. I'm excited to have a seamless cardigan sweater, and I think I understand how the construction works better now. So I hope to do more of those in the future. But yeah, that's all I have for like what I'm doing today, I guess. And another thing I've been working on is a lot of swatching. So I had this sweater idea last summer, I wanna say, and I reached out to a company and we worked out a yarn collaboration and they're a big box company and I, I tried a couple things, I swatched, and the idea I had was too advanced for my skill level at the time, so I'm really behind, obviously, because they sent me that yarn probably a year ago, so I do feel really bad about that, but I do feel much better about the product I'm going to be making this time around, because I didn't really understand how raglans worked last year and now I feel like I have a much better grasp. So I feel more confident in what the pattern will be and how it's written now. So it may be a year late or almost a year late, but 
it will be better. So I made a couple swatches actually. I was going to have it be, it's a guy's sweater, like a, a men's a DK weight raglan shaped sweater. And I was going to have it be seed stitch. And then I was like knitting it up and it looks, it's just too, I don't know, aggressive. It's not the right word. But it's too, I don't know, same, same. It looks like chain mail actually. But I decided to try moss stitch, which is essentially just an elongated version of seed stitch. So a seed stitch is a knit one, purl one, and then you alternate every row so that you never do the same stitch on top of each other. So then you get this look, you know? But a moss stitch, you do that twice for two rows. So you actually work two stitches on top of each other and then switch. And I like the moss stitch a lot better. So yeah, I did a very giant swatch in the round and if you've watched my like, 15 tips for swatching video, I do always suggest swatching in the round if your project is going to be in the round. And if you are worried about playing yarn chicken, you don't have to cut your tails. So I decided it was fine. I wanted it to be as accurate as possible. So I did cut my tails on this big swatch once I got to the needle size that I was pretty confident I was going to use. But on the size smaller that I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use, I didn't cut the tails. I just blocked it, so I washed it, and then I laid it actually down flat so that the strings are on top, and then I just kind of, as best I could, push them off. So you don't have to really tug on them or make the swatch like look really weird, but you can just kind of take the strings and kind of pull them off just a little bit around the edges, or just leave them, and I find you still get a fine enough gauge with that and I don't pin it or anything but my gauge still looks great I use very long tails so it's not pulling so there's plenty of space behind it that I can still pull the strings out if I wanted to so it doesn't affect my swatch at all but this way if I need to at the end of my project I can undo this swatch because the tails are still attached and I can use this yarn to finish my sweater. So this took a little over one ball to do both swatches. So hopefully I don't run out. <laughs> Other than that, that's what I'll be working on next week. That one, the scrap sweater, finishing that cardigan, and I have one more sock pattern I need to finish as well. So I've shown this to you before, but I finally got the charting program that I need to make charts myself for this pattern, so I haven't named them quite yet, but it'll be a free pattern. And I used the Little Wolf Knits yarn. So this pattern will be going into testing soon. I have to still get it tech edited and still do a little bit of grading, but it'll be out probably in August. And that seems like a good enough time frame to me because the Craggy Shores socks just came out a few weeks ago. So giving it a few more weeks before another free pattern drops. But yeah, that one will be out and the dyer behind this actually has a coupon code. I will put it in the down bar below if you're interested. And I think that code is good until the end of August. So if you want to get any of her yarn. And I really enjoyed it. I love the color. I'm actually using some of that color in my scrappy sweater as well. And speaking of the Craggy Shore socks, I am actually working on my second pair. I don't know if I showed this in the last podcast. It's kind of blowing out a little bit, but yeah, very pretty. I love the texture on this. I love the texture going into the heel. It's very fun and almost therapeutic to knit. So I'm using a homespun house in her, I believe it's her May Lord of the Rings Club, and I believe it was Lombus Bread was the name of it. But it's a one of a kind, so if you aren't part of the club, then you, I think you missed it. I don't know if she repeats them eventually, but I love this color. Very pretty. I love the texture. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, I'm hoping to just put steady progress on it. There's no rush. This was our July 4th cast on, 
and I'm really enjoying it. It's just very mindless and easy to pick up whenever I'm bored or need something simple and easy to work on. And in addition to that, I am slowly making more progress on my baby blanket. So I believe I've gotten to the point where I'm ready to start decreasing. So it's a square shape, so you start with a small amount of stitches and you grow to the middle point and then you start decreasing and it creates a square. So pretty sure I've reached the halfway point and I can start decreasing now. Very simple, very easy. It's my Glen Echo baby blanket pattern. It's free if you're interested. But my brother and sister-in-law, so Johnny's brother and his wife, are due, I believe, next weekend. So I gotta get cranking on that to get that finished. And yeah, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. I don't think I ever got the finished object on the podcast. So I showed this to you in the spring. A friend of mine got married in May and I made her her wedding shawl. And so I barely finished with enough time. It's the waiting for a rain shawl. And I don't know if I'll be able to remember the person who made it, but I'll put it in the show notes, which are linked in the description if you're interested. But I modified it a little bit, made it a little bit shallower because I was running out of time. So this is it and it's kind of hard to show you, but it's very, very pretty. I love the way that it just kind of curls at the bottom on both sides. It's very, very pretty. So. My friend who got married is has given this back to me to wash for her because it just poured on her wedding day and it was outdoors. It poured actually a couple days before too. So super muddy. If you could see pictures of her dress, she had mud that it had just traveled up her dress and basically reached her waist. So she was just covered in it and she got a little bit on this. So she gave it back to me to wash and I'll probably block it a little bit. Doesn't look like it needs a whole lot of it. Usually once you block something, you don't really have to block it as aggressively the next time. Lace can be a little finicky, but I think this lace blocked out pretty well. We'll see. But that should be fairly easy to do. It's just time intensive and I just haven't wanted to kind of like bend over that much to do all the pinning, so I haven't done it yet. But this is using one of my favorite dyers yarns, uh, Belinda from Featherfin Yarn. She's all the way in Germany, I believe, because I was very, very tempted to go visit her when we were in Germany, but it was just a couple hours too far out of the way and we couldn't make the stop. But yeah, her company is called Featherfin. This is her sock base. And I don't think I have the ball band anymore, but I, I'll look it up and I'll put it in my description box, in the, in the show notes, I mean. So you can find all the information there. But I will keep buying her yarn for years and years to come. It's one of my favorites. So, yeah, I believe that's everything. Oh, um, I'm wearing a modified version of my Lofoten pattern. So I made this when I was on vacation. It is, yeah, just... My Lofoten, you can see the drop stitches here. It's a yoke sweater. It has kind of a long drop, which is kind of my favorite. But yeah, it has not super form-fitted sleeves, but they're more fitted. And I chose to make the in-between, the three-quarter, and the long sleeves. So three quarters sits usually closer to your elbow, I think, like here. And I wanted it just to be a little bit longer. My other version is the normal three quarter. So I made it cropped. So the length, I don't know if you can see, but the length is a little cropped. And then I added a little bit of length to the sleeves. I ran out of my main color, or my, my color one, I guess is what it would be called, as I was, as I was working this. One of the sleeves has a shorter length of the main color. I think it's this one, but the colors are so similar that you can't really tell, honestly. I used Volenvine yarns, and I used her Pont Neuf colorway. 
I Am No Bird, and there's a third one, but I'm not sure I'll be able to remember it, so it will be in the show notes, but I love it. One of the bases is MCN, and the other, actually two of them are MCN, and one of them is her footsie base. So very, it's all very soft. The colors are beautiful. It's kind of right up my alley. It's not crazy pop. It's not like a crazy pop of color, but it still has color and it's got a beautiful depth to it. I really, really like it. So yeah, this is still my fa my favorite pattern to date. I love it. I can't wait to make a worsted weight version of it for the fall. But yeah, lots to get done today and this weekend. I might do some sewing with my mom tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get that jumpsuit finished. I've been trying to work on it. <laughs> Uh, since we got back from vacation in May. So we joke that we'll have our sewing projects done by the end of the summer, maybe. So yeah, that'll be fun. And I'm just looking forward to having the whole day to work and be very productive. And I'm just gonna go out and get dinner so I don't have to cook and just keep plugging away. So I'm very, very excited about that. There's lots of stuff in the works, tons of things going on. But it's all very exciting. I have to go do my least favorite part, which is the math, and double checking everything. But then I can actually get to some knitting, hopefully, later on this weekend. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend filled with lots of knitting. And if you enjoy the summer weather, I hope you get to go out and get some sun. But have a great weekend. I hope to see you next week.